Welcome to part three of my DVD collection. Uh, let's see how far I can get in this hour. Let's start down here. Start with these, which are my collection of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You got a two disc ultimate edition. Looks beautiful too. I, I love the look on this steel steel case thing. Opens up two disc. You know, this is a two disc ultimate edition. Has a lot of features. Flesh Wounds documentary, Test the Chase of Master, The Shocking Truth, Commentary, it's just a lot of features on it. And then you have a great sequel, in my opinion, Test the Chase of Master 2, the Gruesome Edition. This has a commentary track, two of them actually. Good uh, featurettes on making of the film. Lot, if you like the film, you definitely need this gruesome edition. Really do love it. Great sequel. Third one this is a film. I think it's okay, but I do think it has its problems. The R Ray and N Ray versions of Leatherface Tits of Chainsaw Master 3. Does have features making of Leatherface documentary, commentary. I know this got fucked over a lot by the MPAA and also. I think Robert Shea took some shit out, so it says unrated, but it's not the true unrated version because that one doesn't exist anymore. But it's just one of those that's okay, like nothing special. And yes, the remake. This is a remake that I don't mind that much. I can say I, I fought against liking it, but this one I can say I, I like. Not as good as the original, but I like it. Uh, fills out like this and they actually give you like supposedly crime scene photo autograph like evidence they say evidence and like what it is like uh, like that there you go there stuff like that has some good features as well Test the Chainsaw Master Remake. That prequel can go fuck itself. Once again, unless someone gave it to me for free and I have it in my collection. Well, if you saw it for a dollar, well, where the hell am I going to see that just for a dollar? Still be too much. But to complete the collection, yeah, but still. This is the Batman Anthology, which has all four films, and all these are in a two disc set. Yeah, each one has a two disc version. You know, disc one. I'm not going to show the others, but just to show that. Lighter features, especially even on Batman Robin, which that doesn't deserve it, but. That's the anthology. This one I got as a present. The Marvel Heroes Collection. Which this entails the great director's cut of Daredevil. If you don't like Daredevil or if you like Daredevil, you have to see the director's cut because it's a so much I like the original version, but there's so much better version of Daredevil. It really is. It's a much better version. You got X-Men. X-Men 2. X-Men 3. The Last Stand. This also has the Fantastic Four cartoons. Fantastic Four. Actually, that's the sequel. Here's the first one. Which I know they're rebooting again. They're already doing a reboot of this. And Fantastic Four 2, Rise of the Silver Surfer. And of course it came with Elektra, which I think this movie sucks ass. 
And then this lame thing called Marvel Collectibles, all it is is like, uh, has this. But it's like, uh, I don't know, like some digital comic book or something like that. Also comes a reproduction of the first issue of X Men. Well, the first issue of X Men, <clears throat> and also reproduction of this comic as well. They're both in this. <clears throat> so, of course, when I buy it, I do have the original version of Daredevil. And I kept this because this has all the features. Like, Director's Cut's better, but it doesn't have the features, it has new ones. This one has commentary, but also has this too, which has two great documentaries, one on the comic book, one on the movie. Fun fun documentaries, featurettes, screen tests, music videos, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I like Daredevil. Which I know that's getting a reboot as well. The Christopher Reeve Superman collection. This has the four disc version of Superman in the movie. Which disc one and two. One is the 1978 theatrical version. Disc two is the 2000 expanded edition version. And then disc three and four. You have three documentaries on the making of Superman. Uh, vintage, vintage TV special, The Making of Superman. Um, the 1951 movie Superman, The Mole Man, starring George Reeves. Nine of the 1940s Fleischer Studios Superman cartoons. And then those cartoons are actually in the rest of this DVD set as well. So that was very cool. Then you have Superman 2 which this is a two disc set. I don't have the Richard Donner cut because I wasn't a fan of the cut. Again, unless someone sent it to me for free, I don't really want the Richard Donner cut. I mean, I'll tell you for the collection, but I just wasn't a fan of the Richard Donner cut. I like this cut version. I like the theatrical version more. But again, it is a two disc version. This one has the movie with a commentary. This two has vintage TV specials. And then more of the 1940s Fleischer cartoons, which I like the Superman cartoons of the 40s. Then you have the much hated Superman 3. I really enjoy the film though. Deluxe edition, not much. Vintage TV special from back in the day. Additional scenes, has a commentary track. But I enjoy Superman 3, I have fun with it. And you have Superman 4 Deluxe Edition, which has a commentary with co-screenwriter Mark Rosenthal, the additional scenes, and a trailer. So not much to it. If it has any features, is a fucking weird thing anyway. This is the two disc of Superman Returns, which does this. But that's cool. This is one of those films I don't mind. It has its problems, like it's too slow, but I don't mind the film. I can watch it. It's not perfect, though. And it does have features. It has a very lengthy making of the film from strip to screen. Pretty lengthy documentary on the film. Behind the scenes with Kevin Spacey, who he was pretty funny behind the scenes. Kevin Spacey like going on one of those golf cars. It's like, where's Superman? I'm coming for you, Superman. Where are you, Superman? Like, Again, this Lex Luthor character. I thought it was funny. But uh, I have some fun with Superman Returns. I can admit it. And then this is the amazing Superman. The amazing story of Superman. Look up in the sky. About a almost two-hour feature on... All the incarnations of Superman and the character. That was pretty cool. 
And this is the Dirty Harry franchise, which I want to re-review sometime because Warner Bros. put copyright claims because I used the trailer, so I took them down because I said, fuck it. So I'd like to re-review these movies one day. The Dirty Harry, which this is a great box set. They See, Warner Brothers, when you actually worth a shit, you actually do good in your DVDs. Like, look at this. Look how beautiful this is. I mean, look at this. Yeah, two discs of Dirty Harry, and then one of them is Madam Force, which I love Madam Force. That might be my favorite Dirty Harry one. This one with the, the cops who are trying to be vigilantes. Then this has the Enforcer, Sudden Impact, and the Deadpool, which I enjoy all three of those as well. I like the first Dirty Harry, but to be honest, I like the sequels more. I know each of these discs have special features. Then you also have this thing, which you got a booklet. Really cool. Goes through each movie, what partners he had, like what are the perps. This is of Madam Force, which is Crooked Cops. Here's some pictures from the Deadpool. The type of partners he had, like, here's the partner he had in the Deadpool. Partners he had in each film, perps he had in each film. I thought that was pretty cool. And you have this, which comes out like this. And you have a lot more stuff. You got a DVD on Clint Eastwood himself. You got, like, this map thing, which... Is inspired from the first Dirty Harry film, showing like where the sniper is hit and pretty interesting thing. You also have sort of lobby cards type stuff. Couldn't get out of there. So like there's Madame Force, of course, Dirty Harry, the Deadpool. There's the Enforcer. Personal message from Clint Eastwood. Then you got like these two bundles of paper. One was talking about how Frank Sinatra was going to star in the film and like telegrams that people received. <clears throat> like telegrams that they sent to each other. Just really in depth stuff, man. And the kicker. For this is the yeah, badge. It'd be Harry Callahan, Inspector Harry Callahan. You actually did a badge. <laughs> See, look how cool that is. When you actually do fucking effort. If you do it, they will come. God. <clears throat> Put some effort and we will buy your shit. Not that difficult. I love this series. It gets hated on a lot, but The Matrix... Well, more like the first one gets praised, but everyone hates on the sequels, but I enjoy them. Yeah, booklet on what's on each disc. The Matrix has a two discs, The Matrix and The Matrix Revisited, which is the making of the film. I thought they did such a great job with these. The Matrix Reloaded and Two Disc. Like each film has a commentary. One is by philosophers who really enjoy the film, and one's by critics who hate the film. <laughs> so it's weird. that's such a weird thing. Guess they want to get both points of view. So people who like it, and people who hate it. So I thought, wow, that's ballsy. That's really ballsy. Matrix Revolutions, 
which is a two disc. Then you have the Animatrix. Sorry about that, stupid cats. Trying to get in. Sorry about that. The Animatrix. Like I was saying, this is a really good set. A lot of behind the scenes features and stuff. Very in depth. And then on top of that, you even get bonus called the Burly Man Chronicles. Well, it's, the whole thing's called the Matrix Experience, but one of the stuff is called the Burly Man Chronicles. Like, yeah, Roots of the Matrix. Insightful documentaries that probe the historical, philosophical, and technological inspirations of the Matrix trilogy. The Burly Man Chronicles. Profiles craftspeople, actors, and filmmakers who devote years of their lives to the movie trilogy and enter the Matrix console game. Zion Archive. Concept art, storyboard, drawings, music videos, TV spots, trailers, The Matrix Online. Just very in-depth on the making of these films. Very interesting stuff. But you have that. Okay, we got... This. And then we get to my John Carpenter collection. Yeah, a Saw and Prison 13. Unfortunately, I did not know there was a Bare Bones DVD, but apparently this is the Bare Bones DVD, which sucks. That's a Saw and Prison 13 classic movie. The Fog. Classic film. Got Steve from New York, two disc, special edition. Then you have the sequel, with Steve from LA. The thing, I still have this on DVD, even though I have the Blu ray, because this DVD has more. All the features of, of the DVD did not carry over onto the Blu ray. So. The full documentary, 80 minute documentary intact, is not on the Blu ray. It's like in pieces. Plus, this actually has behind the scenes photos, outtakes from the film, storyboard, concept art, like all this other stuff. I don't know why they did that. It sucks. But yeah, this is when Universal actually gave a shit. Actually, do a shirt. And if they even have this on the inside. So that's why I keep my DVD. Beautiful film by John Carpenter, Starman. I reviewed all of John Carpenter films way back when, so they're on the channel. Christine, this is a special edition, which actually has a commentary. And featurettes and deleted scenes on the film. The Great Big Trend Little China. This is actually the two disc, which I I don't know if it's hard to find or not, but disc one, which has a commentary, but also has a disc two, which has deleted scenes, featurette, interview with Richard Edlin, production notes, t trailers, TV spots, music video, the Coop de Ville's. You should hear the wind is wise and baby. We gotta run. Run into the distant night. Run until they take us away. Take us away. Take us away. Big trouble in little China. Huh? Love that film to death. Whoops. This is from overseas of They Live. This is well before they said they were going to do a special edition Shao Factory, which now I'm kind of a fool. But I got this because it had the commentary with Roddy Piper and John Carpenter. Roddy Piper and John Carpenter. But now 
Looks like I will have to get that Blu-ray sometime. I don't know when. I mean, it's not out yet, but still. It's a day live. Thanks to Exodus 1 Ben, he sent me this, Prince of Darkness. Which, the reason was, this has a commenter with John Carpenter. And, I forget which actor it was. It's not Jameson Parker, it's not Dennis Dunn, it's not Victor Wan, it's not Donald Pleasance. But it's a guy who's been in uh, Peter Jason, I can't remember his name. But uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Prince of Darkness. And this actually has a commentary with John Carpenter. I love this film, In the Mouth of Madness. Highly underrated John Carpenter film. Ooh. Wish this had more features though. It has a commentary, but I wish it had more features. Vampires, John Carpenter's Vampires, I love this movie as well. No, f well, this is a commentary trap, but really no other features. Should have been a bigger hit. This is a film a lot of people hate on, but I enjoy. Go some Mars. Has an 80s feel to it. So that's all the John Carpenter ones. I'm not a fan of The Ward, so that's why I don't have that. I've never seen Dark Star. I don't have that one, but... I'm a big fan of the show, Dirty Jobs with Mike Rowe. I know you're saying, well, this is season four. But... I... Way back when... Got all these Dirty Jobs. Because they were releasing them in such a shitty way that it's like, there's no way I'm going to afford all that shit. Like, they just release it in such a stupid way, which is insulting. Like, fuck that. I actually won all of them. Now we get to my Chuck Norris collection. Fuck, come on. Well, oh, fuck you. The Octagon, which this actually has features, a making of, and how American cinema changed Hollywood forever. Um, I don't think so, because no one remembers American cinema, where the hell this group was. No one remembers that, but yeah, this is the Octagon, and one of those weird paper sleeve things. Then you got... Good guys wear black. Because I want to do a Chuck Norris marathon sometime too. The CIA can't afford John T. Booker alive. Hello, special features include interactive menus, multiple subtitle tracks, and scene selections. Ooh. Yeah, good guys wear black. A force of one. He hears the silence, he sees the darkness. Only he can stop the killing. This is always such a weird cover to me. A force of one. This. Maybe I can do. Come on. Put these back. I think the flying ninja sent me this. I should not say I think because I'm an idiot. But I want to thank him for it. An eye for an eye. This is one I was looking for, but he sent it to me. Thank you very much, man. But it's an eye for an eye. With Richard Roundtree and Christopher Lee in it. Classic, Sound Rage, Missing in Action. Now, I know you're wondering because I'm going to show you this. Missing in Action 1, 2, and 3. Now, you're wondering why do I have this? Well, because this disc, Missing in Action 1 is supposed to be 
on this side? No. It's missing action two. When I flip the disc, it's missing action two again. So both sides are missing action two and then missing action three. So it says there's missing action one in it, but it's not, so it's bullshit. So I had to buy a fucking by itself. Same with this, they just did a shitty job with these Ch Chuck Norris stuff. Like, you see this Delta Force, Delta Force 2, and Code of Silence. But I had to keep and or buy both of these Code of Silence, Delta Force 1. Because the Delta Force and Code of Silence by the third at the sound is off. And it's not my DVD player because it's never happened before. Like Delta Force 2 comes out fine, but like Crota Sounds by the third act, like people are talking, and then the dialogue is coming in like later. I'm like, I didn't do anything, and now the dialogue, like the sound is just drifting away from their dubbing. What the fuck? Like, fucking. Is this Echo Bridge or something? Now, whoever fuck released this are assholes. Fucking bastards. So I'll buy Delta Force 2, so I had to buy Delta Force 1 and keep my code of silence. Ah. Fucking stupid. Let's see. Ah, it. Come on. Alright, we got Love Wolf McQuaid and Breaker Breaker. Firewalker, a favorite of mine, with Chuck Norris and Louis Gossett Jr. Invasion USA. It's time to die. Great Richard Lynch, who is greatly missed as the bad guy. Hero and the Terror. We got this actually works, but it's Hellbound, this triple pet Hellbound, the Hitman, and Force Vengeance. Three films I did not have, so I thought, wow, this is a good deal. Top Dog. Yeah, yeah. Then the stuff that he went on to do, which heard are pretty shitty. The Cutter. This, which is three film co connection connection collection, the president's man, the president's man, lie in the sand, and Logan's war bound by honor. Or well, actually, yeah, it is three movies. Yeah, yeah, these might not be that good, but hell, it's Chuck Norris, so. Is that from Delta Force 2, that scene? I haven't seen the film, but I swear that scene right there is from Delta Force 2. Great, I'm in for a winner there. Now here's where it's going to get more interesting, because you'll see... Well, you see shortly, I have Friday the 13th, some of the deluxe editions. But I also keep this Friday the 13th box set. Because... Has part one and part two, which I don't need features on part one. Part two, the deluxe edition, has nothing about part two in it. I think it has features from about part one. I'm like, well, fuck that. I want to actually hear about part two. I'm talking about the deluxe edition, but these, yeah, bare bones. Now, three and four, Friday Thing Part Three has a commentary track in this set with the cast and crew. This commentary track is not on the deluxe edition that they re-released. 
It's like, but it's in 3D! I'm like, okay, but why didn't you carry over the commentary track that's in this fucking collection? Explain that. Part 5, which is Bare Bones, Part 6. This has a commentary of Tom McLaughlin by itself. Or by himself. Which is a different commentary than commentary they have in Part 6, the Deluxe Edition. See, Paramount are a pair of pricks. Part 7, this has a commentary with Kane Hunter and John Carl Beekler, which I think is different from the DVD they have over there. Friday the 13th, Part 8, this actually has a commentary with the director, Rob Heaton, which is not on that one. <laughs> and then none of these bonuses are on those, so if you want these bonuses, you need this set. I look forward to that Crystal Lake Memories documentary, I really do. But this is Friday the 13th, Killer Astros. Eight part feature on the making of the films. You actually have Corey Feldman interviewed. Amy Steele. A few others. They talk with Tom Savini. They have like the deleted part seven footage with the counter with John Carl Beaker and Kane Hodder. Trailers and other stuff. And then they have these Deluxe editions, which this is a part four. I didn't get part one because I don't care. I like the film, but I don't need to see any more about the making of the film. Part two has nothing about part two, it's just more about part one. Part three, it's only 3D. Doesn't even have the commentary that's in this box set. Part four, this actually does have features. Has a fun commentary with Adam Green and Joe Lynch. It's a fun fan commentary. You have another commentary. You got a little feature on the making of the film. Some deleted scenes, the lost ending. So, this is probably one of the better, the deluxe editions. Then you have a new beginning. This actually has features, has a commentary with Danny Steidman and some of the actors. It has a little feature on the making of Friday 13 Part 5. But another bad thing about Pear Purse, they have the stupid stuff like. Crystal Lake Massacres Revisited Part 2, Part 3, like, stupid mock documentary about, oh, this really happened, blah, blah. and then also Lost Tales from Camp Blade, like, just like random folks, actors, getting killed in shitty ways, in this, like, $5 budget recreation of stuff. If you've seen these, you know what I mean. Useless features. Paramount, get your head out of your fucking ass and learn how to do... Like, make more features on the movie, not this bullshit Lost Tales from Camp Blood that's about not about the movie. And this bullshit. Anyway, this is part six. Now, why do all these movies keep featuring the mask from Friday the 13th Part 5? Like, literally, this is Friday the 13th Part 5 with the big marks here. God, lazy assholes. Yeah, this has a counter with Tom McLaughlin with, uh, I think the guy who played the sheriff and some other guy from the crew. That commentary is not on that box set, but that has a different commentary with Tom McLaughlin. Has a little making of the film, and not much. Friday the 3rd Part 8, Jason Tate's Mad. No, I don't have Part 7, because it wasn't there. Oh. But uh, commentary with Scott Reese, Jensen Daddy, and Kane Hodder. While well, that one has a commentary with the director. Little making of the film, part eight. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have part seven, deluxe edition. Oh well. Let's go with this. Jason Goes to Hell, which is. I love this movie. It's the first one I ever saw. These are the unrated and rated versions. But see the unrated version. Also has a fun commentary with the director and the writer. Very fun commentary. This is a film that gets shit on a lot, but I do enjoy Jason X. They knew what they were doing. It's for fun. This does have another fun commentary with director Jim Isaac, who's no longer with us, and writer Todd Farmer. Those two are really funny. They make fun of each other a lot. Um... Making of the film, some good stuff on there. Free version of Jason, this is a two disc edition.
the remake or reboot Friday the 13th Killer Cut, which this DVD is fucking pitiful because it's blue the rebirth of Jason Voorhees. That's like what five minutes long. Some deleted scenes that offer nothing. Like, why doesn't this have more features? Like the fucking remake of Halloween is three disc set. Bullshit. And then his name was Jason, which I did review this. I do have my problems with it. I do like it, especially disc two, which has extended interviews and stuff. But I did have issues with this. Obviously, I'm not alone because they're doing the Crystal Lake Memories documentary. So it's like they knew they fucked up with this. So that's why they're redoing it. When they do it right the first time instead of redoing it 50 times. But at least they're doing that, which I like. Please don't fall. Yeah, you fucking bastards. You are going to fall. Oh, fuck you guys. Anyway. This is my Nightmare on Elm Street box set of the original films. The reason I have this is because... Oh, this is the 3D glasses for Freddy's Dead. But it does have... Oh, and they have a booklet as well. Talking a little bit about the films and stuff. But it also has a bonus disc encyclopedia which they have music videos and interviews with directors and um, a lot of good stuff in this uh, labyrinth thing pretty good stuff and lo and behold they actually have like here's West Crane's new nightmare but like I was saying get this in there get that in there They have the poster as the cover art. Like Freddy's Dead. Number no three part five. Why couldn't Paramount do this with Friday the thirteenth? No. See? They use the cover. The poster. They couldn't do that Friday the thirteenth for some reason. There's part three. And there's part two. Now the reason you don't see part one is because I threw I got rid of that. Because I bought this. This is the Infinifilm two disc edition of the first one, which has more features. Still has the commentary, but also has a little making of the first film, The House That Freddy Built, The Legacy of New Line Cinema, New Line Horror, uh, Nightmare Fat Track. I mean, they just has more features, so. There you go. Then we got the great Never Sleep Again, the Elm Street Legacy. This is how you do it right. This is really wonderful, wonderful look on the series. Then thanks to my friend Eric, who I haven't talked to in a long time. I'm sorry about that. Uh, movie Reviews for Life. Is that really? He told me about this guy who made this. The Unreleased Estras. Was this, look, how, look how this guy did this. This has all the stuff that was never released. TV spots, deleted scenes, uncut Dan and Greta Desk from Nightmare 5, the 1 900 number spots, Robert England on Mad TV, Bravo's Greatest Villains, Freddy Krueger, I Love the 87 Man on Nightmare on Elm Street, the Freddy Krueger Video Hour promo on MTV, Mad TV, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Snowdoll. The Spike TV, Crashing the Set of Freddy vs. Jason. Stevie T's This is Horror Nightmare Series Sediment. East Dream Queens, Heather Lighting Camp. And more. Disc 2, Music Videos. This is Horror FS Dream Master Sediment. This is Horror FS Dream Child Sediment. Like a half hour or hour of 
a fetch footage from Nightmare on Elm Street 3 The Dream Warriors. This 3, the Freddy Krueger MTV Video Hour, not just the promo, this is actually the hour. Back in the day, the making of Nightmare on Elm Street 4 feature from back in the day. VH ones where are they now? Lisa Wilcox Tuesday night. I mean, more stuff. This four, Freddy's Dead, the making of the final nightmare from back in the day. Stars on the set of Freddy vs. Jason. A Showtime special called Freddy Speaks. Slash and Burn, the Freddy Krueger story. E behind the scenes of Freddy vs. Jason. Just a lot of features that was never released. Great set. And then Booty Men, which. It's shitty, but I have because Robert Edwin does a commentary and it's basically a bunch of movie trailers on some of this stuff. Not even movie trailers, but like clips from, I should say clips from these movies. And Robert Edwin does a commentary on them. Still pretty shitty, but still. I like the commentary by Robert Edwin. <clears throat> then my Halloween collection. I have this cover. But it's actually the 25th anniversary two disc of Halloween, which has a bunch of the features. Like the, the 87 minute documentary on the film, um, on location 25 years later, commentary, stuff like that. But I kept that slipcase. Halloween 2, which I know they're coming out with a Blu ray. Uh, I'm going to wait on DNA until I save some money. Same with Halloween 3, which I do enjoy. I do love very much. I think it's underrated. And you got... Halloween 4. This is a great DVD. This is a wonderful commentary with the writer Alan B. McElroy. That's a fantastic commentary. Has another commentary with actors Ellie Cornell and Daniel Harris. Has a little making of Halloween 4 and a trailer. Yeah, then you have Halloween 5, which pfft, this has features. I know there's new Blu rays, but I don't need them. Halloween the Curse of Michael Myers. That's funny. People shit on Halloween 3 because there's no Michael Myers, right? Yet, you have a Michael Myers that cries. You have a Michael Myers that is controlled by druids and magic stones. By Paul Rudd. <laughs> yeah, fucking remakes. I have him as a hobo. Or trailer park trash. But Halloween 3 is bad? Oh, and then he sees fucking Trigger and white horses and looks like a fucking bum. Oh, but Halloween 3, that's so bad. Explain that shit to me. Helen H2O, really enjoy this film. I don't know why it doesn't have more features on it, though. It, they should have just ended with this. Yeah, Helen Resurrection. Choo -choo -choo, motherfucker. And Halloween 25 Years of Terror, which is... Um, basically, the, the making of this series. A lot of features on that. I did a review for this film. If you like Halloween, you don't have that, should definitely get it. Uh, I might be able to get the rest of this done. Well, probably not, but fuck it. I'll try. This is the complete set of the Three Stooges, which I'm glad Columbia did. Like Volume 1. Volume 2. Volume 3. Volume 4. This is where you get into Shemp. Volume 5. Volume 6. Volume 7. And then this is when you get into Joel Besser. Volume 8. The last. I don't have the Three Stooges movies like. Three Stooges going to orbit or meet Hercules or any of that, but that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Got the first season of MacGyver.
thingy. They had bought this old ass fucking box set of the transfers, which this pisses me off. Because apparently, I have to watch this again. But I don't think these have the fucking the full moon. Like I, I remember back in the day on the VHS after the credits, they would have a full moon on the making of. I forget. Are they on this? I know there's a guy on here who reviewed these. And it said he had it on those, but I don't think there's any features on these. Fuck. So I... Yeah, the definitive collection my ass. Yeah. So all the covers look the fucking same. But then, weirdly enough, they put them on the back. They put the cover on the back of the DVD. But on the front, they're all the same. There's no documentary. There's no retrospective look back on the series. Full moon, you fucking lying assholes. Lying piece of shit. Bam Biff and Red Skelton. Had to get this. This has bloopers, blunders, and ad libs. Kin of Laughter, The Lost Episodes, and Public Pigeon number one. Like that. And the Keen of Laughter. Really a big fan of Red Skeleton. Okay. Then let's go with this. These are all. Let's see. Yeah, these are pretty much all the Martha Costco's films I have. Piss off. God. Come on now. Including Redemption Kip Buster 5, which stars Mark the Costos. Come on. Brain fuck it. Do that then. You got Only the Strong. This is the special uncut version of Drive with all the features. This is the one to get because it has all the features, fun commentary, documentary, stuff like that. Great movie. This is a film I do enjoy. I know a lot of people hate this film, but it's low budget, but I enjoy it. DNA. It is a ripoff of stuff like Predator, but I was entertained by this movie. I'd rather watch this from Predators. <laughs> I don't know, I'll piss someone off, I don't care. Because this was sent to me and I reviewed this film. Brotherhood of the Wolf. There's one that he did called Sanctuary. Which wasn't that great, to be honest. Directed by Tibor Takis, the same guy who did The Gate and The Gate 2 directed this. Sanctuary. Then there's Alien Agent with Marta Costros and Billy Zane, which wasn't much. I'm Omega. This was sent to me. Thank you once again, man. I do enjoy this film. Yes, it's Asylum. It's low budget. I know. I wish they gave it a bigger budget, but for what it was, I enjoyed it. And I got this. Not only because it has the bank job with Jason Statham, but... It has the base. Want to give that another shot sometime. This also has Chain of Command with Roy Scheider, Michael Bean, Patrick Muldoon. That's probably why I haven't seen it yet because it stars fucking Patrick Muldoon. But, and then also another film called Way of the Gun. Then I got these, which are, I'm sure these were on Sci-Fi Channel. Scorcher, not Scorcher, this is Scorcher, with Roger Hauer, John Reese davies and Mark Costos. And then you have Solar Attack, with Mark Costos and Louis Gossett Jr. So that's all the Mark Costos films I have. And, let's see, 
then we have yeah this will be all of Olivia Grimmer stuff that I have including a film that I don't think it was ever released on DVD at least in the US so I bought a DVD-R if I can't have it on DVD what am I supposed to do? Angel Town really enjoy this film Angel Town Thanks once again for sending this man, Nemesis. Love this movie. Once again, thank you. Automatic. Really enjoy this film. Had a lot of fun with this movie. Did a review for this film. <laughs> once again, thanks. Savat. I know you're not a big fan of this movie. Oh, he knows who he is, but I enjoy this film, Savat. Olivia Gruner, James Brolin, Michael Palance, and uh, the Beastmaster. Yeah. Mark Singer. Savat. I really enjoy this film. Good by Isaac Florentine. Then you have Velocity Trap. Lo and behold, this actually has a commentary with the director. Special Fest Guy and Olivier Gruner. Which, <laughs> to be honest, is better than the movie. That's Velocity Trap. Pretty terrible, terrible movie, but has a commentary. I got this. Not for Steve Velocity. I don't know what the fuck that is. But I got it mainly for Interceptor Force 1 with Olivier Gruner and Ernie Hudson. And then Interceptor Force 2. Of course, Sci Fi Channel. But I like Olivia Gruner, so that's why. Mercenary. I do have Mercenary 2, but that was only released on VHS, so I have it on VHS. But I do have that one. But this is the first Mercenary. Thank you once again for sending this to me. If they're watching, hopefully. Then one of those weird glass cases, Mars, which is a pretty bad movie as well. And then finally we got The Circuit and The Circuit 2. And those are all the Olivier Gruner films I have. Have these. This is all my Dean Kane movies. Yes, I actually like Dean Kane. Although I'm not even a fan of Lois and Clark. I do really like Dean Kane. And we got Dead and Deader. This is actually a pretty entertaining film if you've never seen Dead and Deader. I thought it was pretty entertaining. Sort of a zombie comedy. Then this sort of a, it is made for cable, but it's sort of a take on Die Hard and a mall. But it was made for cable, so it's not that great. But I, I liked it. Breakaway with Dean Cain, Eric Roberts, and Eric Eliniak. Damn, you could tell it was made for cable, but I still like it. Fire Trap. Phase 4 with Dean Cain and Brian Bosworth. No relation to the Phase 4, the sci-fi horror movie. These are made for sci-fi, but I had some fun with these, I will admit. Dragon Fighter. And yeah, these are with Dean Cain. I think that's why, because I like Dean Cain. And Boa. <laughs> Michael Keane, if you're watching, I'm sure these are right up your alley. Boa and Dragon Fighter. And two of the weakest ones, Dark Descent, which is pretty much a shitty version of Outland, only underwater. Well, actually, is it under? No, it's not underwater. The 
Yes, undersea miners is underwater. Yeah, but it's pretty much a really shitty version of Outland, which that was disappointing. Just I know it's direct DVD, but still. And then Final Approach. This is filmed with Dean Cain, Anthony Michael Hall, William Forsythe, and Leah Thompson. It was made for cable, I think. There's no fucking reason though that this film is 169 minutes. There's no reason for it. It's almost three hours. There's no fucking reason. So yeah, it's pretty fucking boring. Anyway. I'm probably not going to be able to get to the bottom. But I'll say that for next time. So either way, thanks for watching part three. And stay tuned for the next installment. Later.